Hey guys, this is Blitz. This uh, storm video, I guess you've heard my intro on all the other videos. Um, this storm video is going to detail the Storm vs. Queen of Pain matchup, which is something a lot of people requested. I actually went through all my replays, and I can't find a Storm vs. SF or a Storm vs. Sniper that's downloadable. So I guess when those are available to me, I will upload them. For now though, I will focus on the matchups that I do have. I know that Storm vs. Sniper is something that people really want to see. Um, because right now the matchup is really difficult, but hopefully by the time I play a sniper, the hero's nerfed and I won't have to make the video. But uh, I actually don't really struggle with snipers so much, or SFs, because you can both kill them at level 6. But a matchup that I used to struggle with quite a bit was the Storm vs. Queen of Pain matchup. And the reason for this is because dagger trades so efficiently, it makes you slow, it takes damage so you can't pop salves or bottle charges or anything like that and killing her at level 6 is really impossible. But something I really recently learned about the matchup that made it a lot easier was my ability, I guess, to be able to kill her um, really early, and so I just want to be able to show that to you guys really quickly. Um, I'm trying to upload videos right now, so I want to do multiple uploads at once, so I hope this isn't too bad on my computer. Okay, so it says upload pending. Hopefully this works. Okay, so in this matchup, I'm going to show you it's going to be Storm versus Queen of Pain. In all of the other matchups, what I did is that I briefly discussed my mindset going into the matchup and their mindset. And this is what you should do for every mid matchup. You should think to yourself, okay, where's that hero strong? What does that hero want to do to me before, before you even get into the lane? And so how do I avoid that? So with Queen of Pain versus Storm, ask yourself really quickly, what is she going to try to do to beat me in the lane? You can pause the video here at this point and see if your thoughts match up with mine. Okay, so that was enough of a pause. Let's go into- oh god, I'm so lame. Um, I know that a Queen of Pain will try to dagger me as soon as I enter the lane, right? And I know that a Queen of Pain wants to get into a right-click fight with me, and she wants to get the level advantage so at level 6 she has enough burst damage to kill me. As a Storm Spirit, what do I do then? I avoid the dagger range because it's shorter than her right-click range, and I play the dagger range repeatedly. So by pulling back, and anytime she tries to skip the creep wave to try to dagger me, I'll try to play my high ground, so that if she does eventually dagger me, she can't right click me on top of it. Because that's the combination that worries you, it's the fact that you get daggered and then right clicked. But if you think about it, if you play the high ground and she's on the low ground, what is she actually going to do? Queen of Pain doesn't have that much armor or HP, and so you're okay. The key to this matchup is that in all the other matchups, I actually only had two pull tangos, or I had my own set of tangos. In this matchup, it's absolutely imperative that A, you get pulled, or B, you buy the max amount of regen that you can. So buying something like a salve is really helpful, um, because tangos just don't really cut it if you're getting right-clicked a lot. And just allowing yourself to not get killed pre-bottle is the key here. Because once you get your bottle, if you really think about it, the matchup becomes a ton easier. She can't really spam scream on you, she can only use the uh, ticks from the dagger, and so when that happens, you're okay. So I actually have two matchups re replays loaded. Um, I guess I'll watch this one first. I haven't actually seen these, so this will be the first time. But hopefully I do what I detailed out here. And if I didn't, then I'm a shitter. And you shouldn't be watching me anyways. So she picks Queen of Pain after I pick Storm. There's a Silencer in the game too. I believe I win this though. It doesn't really matter. Silencers don't really bother me. So. Notice that I never go for the block, there's no real point in it. I think that it's just really inefficient to do it. So, um, let's just show the lane really quick. Alright, so she decided to go for the bounty rune to help her team secure. This is pretty common. I get daggered off the bat, but I'm playing my high ground. I shouldn't have let her dagger me that easily. And I'm actually going to right click that creep. Don't get that one though. But I'm playing back in and out. This guy comes over. Wow, I didn't realize this. This is a bad replay to watch now. Alright, I'm gonna exit out of this one. I don't want to see that one anymore. <laughs> I definitely don't want to show you guys a matchup where I, I had the advantage from the start. I don't think that's very accurate. There, are, there aren't a lot of vengeful spirits that are kind of come out and just right click for you. So we'll just skip the doozy of that one. I don't want anyone in the chat comments also to accuse me of um, having an easy matchup. I want this matchup to be as miserable as possible for me. So I bought my own set of tangos in this one. For some reason, um, 
I wasn't able to get any extra regen. Oh, I sold it because he gave me Tango's. Sick. This makes things a lot easier. I believe I bought regen here. Buy regen here, Will. Do it for me. Maybe I don't. You should buy a salve, though. I don't know how old this replay is. My name is Spooby Doo, so it should be pretty recent, but. I think I'm sitting here debating. Yes! I bought a salve. So I buy, I buy a salve, and the point of the salve is just to kind of dissolve the uh, Shadow Strike. That's going to be the point of it. So I'm able to get the block. It's going to be superior to hers because for some reason every single mid hero now tries to get the uh, thing. So I see that she only has two points of regen. I'm going to eat a Tango pretty soon after I kill these creeps, I think, using Remnant. She's on the low ground, so right clicking me isn't easy. Whereas CSing for me is quite easy because I'm on the high ground here. And I get as close as possible. Notice that really quickly is that I get as close as possible to the CS so that the travel time is shortened. So that if she tries to deny me, she's on A, the low ground, and B, I'm like melee to melee range essentially at that point. So I'm okay. And I get to press up on her because again, and this is going to be a common theme, I have the creep advantage here. Why run away, right? She's not going to try to right click trade me under this. And that's the key is controlled aggression. You're not just meant to right-click people to right-click people, and you're not meant to get right-clicked without playing aggressively at all. Like, even if I don't get any right-clicks off on her at this point, the key is that I'm forcing her back sooner than she wants to, sooner than her comfort zone. And I still don't eat a Tango here, and I hate myself for it, but I think at this point I pull back and I go eat a Tango. So I'm going to eat this Tango, because it's a bit further back. I'll save this tree for later. Um, now I'm on my low ground. Notice that she's trying to dagger me. What do I do? I pull away, right? I'm making this difficult for her. I go up. At this point, it's okay to trade hits with her because uh, she went on the low ground as well. And she only has two points of regen, right? Because she decided to go for a fast bottle. And I recognize that. And I'm okay with trading with her there. So now I just peel it back over and over again. I know she has no way of killing me. She used her scream to be able to get all those CS. And now this is the perfect example. I have, my, I have a salve up. I'm not going to lose any more HP. I'm really careful not to get my salve back. Uh, my salve popped and right now in terms of CS I'm up 6 to 3 and she's not at a whole lot so she's going to bottle really quick she'll have enough for dagger but the key there is that I pulled away when she did have dagger notice that I'm pressing up on her now because I have the creep advantage she just tried to dagger me there I run back and now I press forward again I have the creep advantage I think I'm actually going to wait to eat this tango because I want to be as close to full HP as possible so that if she does dagger me and stuff like that I'm okay so she's playing the high ground well now, I'm playing the low ground, I'm not getting myself um, right clicked for no reason. A lot of people in this scenario would just walk into the middle here, get daggered, right clicked four times and then run away. What was the point of that? You don't gain anything for that. The key here is to play back, establish a zone where she has to chase me instead of CSing or denying. That's, that's what you want to do is like force her to run after you to dagger. And the range on it is actually quite small, it's like this. It's like this is like the max range. So as long as I don't enter that and I play back, it's like dancing, right? I don't want to. I don't want my hit foot to hit hers when she comes up. I have to anticipate her pressing up, and that's the key: is to not get daggered here. Wait for the creep wave; it'll eventually pull down. There will be opportunities like this where you can see us. And now I have the creep advantage, and I did get right click like six times for it. But the key is that I've got my bottle now. I've got the creep advantage. She's not going to play up on me because I have the creep advantage right there, and she goes for the rune instead which is acceptable, I realize that, and I have to take advantage of this as much as possible, why she did go for the rune. I remnant for a lot of CS, and now she's coming back. I peel back again. I don't want to get hit, my bottle's coming. Uh, this is a range where she can kill me from, so I just play back, I wait for my bottle to come, my bottle's here, and now I can play as aggressively or passively as I want to. Is this the one where I accidentally bottle crow my null? Okay, no it's not. There was a matchup where I accidentally forgot, and I couriered my null talisman instead and I brought back my bottle and it was empty and I was like what just happened and I had to watch the replay to figure it out so now I can trade with her because look she has two armor not a lot of HP I've got six armor and I've got a bottle coming I've got full everything right now she can't trade mana with me very efficiently she can only dagger me because scream costs so much so I can see us now really easily and it was just the benefit of playing back when I had to I press up on her again like even if I don't um, get anything off on her like, look, I still push up because it forces her to run back and it doesn't let her tank the wave and then I run back. And then I can wait for my bottle here. Um, I've got a stick coming as well, I think. I normally don't get one, but I felt really annoyed. And if I look at their lineup, it's stick-worthy. 
Okay, so really quick, that's something where she messed up. Um, she thought, okay, every Queen of Pain thinks this for some reason. And look at how far I am away from the creeps, though, because I don't have my bottle. There's nothing for me to do up here, right? But here's the key, is that she felt she had enough mana and HP that I was going to die. The key here is not to run away, it's to fight. Because with Remnant and Overload, you can't lose the fight. So she blinks up on top of me. She decides to try to fight me. I'm going to pop my Remnant. Or I'm going to pull. I'm going to Remnant hit. She's dead. No problems. That was silly of her. But the key is that she got really frustrated with the lane because she wasn't able to dominate it. And I was able to just constantly peel back, play the dagger. That's the key here. In every other matchup, it's different where you want to play the right-click advantage. But in here, it's to play the dagger. Don't let it be easy for her to just dagger you and right-click. You'd be surprised, like... If you take a look at any of your replays, and you're actually not a fool... <laughs> like, a lot of these people, when I see them play the Queen of Pain matchup, for example, and I do coaching... They'll say, well, it's different in my games. My Queen of Pain just daggers me and right-clicks. But I'll look at their positioning, and they just stand in the middle of the lane, in no man's land, get right-clicked three times, and then they learn their lesson. Don't take that long to learn the lesson. Every single Storm Spirit player, I'm telling you, you think you're not guilty of this, but you are. Every single Storm Spirit player, or any player in general, whenever you give the range disadvantage or something like that, it takes them too long to learn the lesson. They get hit six times, and it's like they have short-term memory or something. They get hit six times, they get daggered, and then they, they remember, they're like, oh, I can't do that, I can't get right-clicked a ton, I have to play back. And so don't take that long to learn your lesson. Establish how the matchup is going to go before the game happens before the game starts. While you're waiting for your block or whatever, think to yourself, what am I going to do in this matchup? What is What are the strengths of Queen of Pain? What is she going to do that's going to annoy me? And how do I avoid that? That's how you should process that. So thank you guys. Um, I have two more matchups to do. It's Storm versus Sniper and Storm versus Shadow Fiend. I don't have anybody on right now that are that's willing, um, that's very good, that's willing to do those matchups right now. But when I find an opponent or when I find a replay, hopefully I will show you those matchups. Um, I hope these are informative for you. I know a lot of them seem like obvious information. I think Lumi once put it best. He said, coaching or teaching somebody high-level mechanics is like taking someone to the gym and they know what the equipment does. They just have to be made aware that it exists. And that was like the most convoluted example I've ever heard, but it makes sense, right? Is that once I tell you this, you probably think to yourself, of course I knew that. But the key here is that you probably don't put it into principle until I've told you. So, thank you everybody. Uh, you can always tweet at me to give me comments and stuff about the series and the feedback. I think once I do sh uh, Storm vs. Sniper and Storm vs. Shadow Fiend, I'll be going over Shadow Fiend or Queen of Pain or one of the various mid-heroes and detailing six or seven matchups. I think that's the limit of what I want to do, six or seven lane matchups. And then after I'm done with that series, I think the next one will be detailing how to play the mid-game and farming patterns, if you're looking forward to that. Ooh, farming patterns. And then the last one in my series will probably be how to play the late game and itemizations. So thanks everybody for watching. Um, hopefully I don't fall off the face of the earth. Goodbye.